and uh, just so you know, we are kind of planning on uh, going out for dinner tonight. Uh, the restaurant is, I can't say it, so I'll just drive by. Geno, Geno Bay um, and uh, the reservation we have is for 7 p.m. Saturday. I do need to get a final head count, so if you're interested, just sign up on the paper and I'll take care of that. And then obviously show up at the restaurant at 7 p.m. So email was enough to send, but if you send to email, it's Yeah, you're on the list. Okay. I, I got, if email was sent before 5 p.m. on Thursday, your name was added to the list. After 5 p.m., I, I didn't check my email, so that was bad. Um, and uh, I think that wraps up our notes. There is an 11 o'clock invited address on innovative combinatorics, and I'll just introduce Jonathan. So our next speaker is Jonathan Snyder from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and he is speaking on virtual tune-ups. Isn't enumerative combinatorics redundant? <laughs> That's what they call it. Okay. We can argue with the whole research group. I guess I don't know what those words mean like I thought I did. Uh, okay, hi, I'm Jonathan. Uh, and uh, I don't have any actual results to tell you about, so uh, if you like, I'll tell you about what I'm doing my uh, graduate research on, the sorts of objects that I've been uh, studying and the questions I'm asking about them. I call them virtual two-knots. Uh, I mean, we have a pretty good theory of, uh, of uh, two-knots and their diagrams, thanks to many people like uh, Masahiko here. And, uh, uh, we have, of course, a great theory of virtual knots. I'm trying to lift that up one dimension. Uh, so what I'm going to tell you about is what strikes me as a reasonable definition for uh, a virtual two-knot coming from a diagrammatic point of view. Hopefully it's a definition that is useful uh, in terms of just proving basic results about it in the same way we've done in the one-dimensional case. Since we're uh, working from a diagrammatic point of view, let's start with an immersed sphere. Just uh, a two-sphere immersed in R3. You'll recognize this is uh, the flat, you might call it the flat, of a spun trefoil, and in fact, its uh, cross-section is a flat diagram, a, uh, a simple, a be a closed curve, not simple. And here's a, a slice I cut out. Uh, this is a diagram I adapted from Jeff Weeks. So uh, the uh, immersion has these uh, curves of self-intersection, I'm just attaching information to them. The way you would start with a flat diagram and attach crossing information uh, in a purely formal sense, an uh, ordering at each crossing, I'm doing the same thing with the surface, and it makes a pretty picture. When you do the same thing with uh, a third type of crossing, we've got the, now three types of crossings, over like this, under like this, and virtual. Uh, here I've, uh, I've uh, taken one of the three circles of self-intersection on the sphere and I've made it what I'm calling a, uh, a, a virtual crossing, analogous to uh, uh, the uh, virtual crossing in one knot theory. So here we have uh, a cross-section of a virtual two knot and uh, it has virtual crossings. It's uh, just a formal, uh, uh, just a formal uh, idea with don't try to interpret it topologically yet. So as I said, we've got now uh, three sorts of ways we can assign information at these crossing curves. We can do uh, classical in one of the two ways, or uh, virtual. I've decided to uh, uh, represent these virtual crossings just as intersecting planes. With uh, it, it would be too visually uh, ugly to have to uh, draw a little uh, circle around the crossing. So uh, when you see just two planes crossing without a break, I'm calling that a virtual crossing. Uh, you can tell from context. All right, as you know, when you uh, uh, immerse a surface in R3 in a generic way, its uh, self-intersections form curves which are either closed or open. Uh, these aren't necessarily simple curves. They can have, uh, they can, you know, wind around and intersect themselves okay, from time to time, but uh, uh, we get uh, basically these two situations, either uh, 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 crossings that close up in a circle or uh, that uh, end at pinch points. Here are pinch points. If you're, uh, if you have a, a branch points, pinch points, Whitney umbrellas, I have no of a, you don't like the term pinch points. Do you like the term Whitney umbrella? Okay, I'll use branch point. 
<laughs> then uh, that's, that's, that's what uh, Roseman called them. Um, okay, so uh, once again, uh, uh, three ways we can make a branch point. Uh, and sometimes your uh, crossing curves will have triple points, like the uh, x, y, z planes that I've drawn here. Uh, for example, three intersecting spheres uh, have two of these triple points. And uh, we're going to need to assign uh, uh, crossing information along those three uh, axes, the, uh, the yellow, red, the red, blue, and the blue, yellow axes. So in the, uh, in the classical theory, which, uh, which I think we all understand pretty well. There's, uh, there are two ways of assigning that information, but one of them doesn't make sense. One of them we never do. Uh, uh, on the left, we've got a, a nice ordering of the three colors. Blue is, uh, thinking, uh, thinking of these diagrams as uh, projections of an actual knotted surface in four space, we understand that in the uh, W direction, the fourth spatial direction, uh, at the triple point, blue is understood to be on top of pink, which is understood to be on top of yellow. Uh, just thinking, but uh, you know, not thinking topologically, just thinking diagrammatically, we are allowed to assign information like this, but uh, this uh, cyclic ordering that I've got going on on the right, uh, we just don't do. Inspired, of course, by the impossibility of that being a, uh, uh, the projection of a topological object. So, uh, when we bring in virtual crossings, it makes sense for us to be able to have a pure virtual triple point where all three of the axes are uh, given that uh, virtual assignment, or a mixed triple point in which uh, two of the three axes, in this case, uh, uh, blue-red and yellow-blue, I'm calling virtual, and the, uh, the third axis, uh, uh, red, yellow can have either of the classical assignments. So I'll I'll uh, I'll say that a uh, a uh, uh, an immersed surface in in R3 with uh, a generically immersed surface with crossing information is a valid virtual two knot diagram if the triple points look like that or like that look like one of those two arrangements, but not like these. We're not going to, uh, if, uh, if, if we have to, uh, if, if, a, uh, if a virtual two-knot diagram has crossing assignments that uh, come together at triple points in one of these three forbidden ways, then I will call it an invalid diagram. Uh, the three things that don't work are where there's, a, uh, basically where there's only one, uh, where there's only one virtual and two classical. That probably, uh, Sounds familiar? You can guess why I'm uh, ruling these out. Put a height function on the, uh, the three-dimensional diagram and look at its cross-section movies. The three valid types of triple points, their movies look like legal uh, 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 moves, legal uh, randomizer moves. You've got the uh, classical uh, move, and of course it doesn't even matter what, uh, what your uh, height function axis is. No matter, what, uh, no matter how you slice this up, you'll be seeing legal moves with the three legal types of triple points. The uh, classical three move, the mixed three move, and the pure virtual three move. <laughs> 